calculate the flux of the given vector field across the boundary of the annular region between x squared plus y squared equals 25 and x squared plus y squared equals 36. Looking in the graph, the vector field is graphed in blue and the two circles are graphed in red. The region R is a region bounded between the two circles, this region here. So at first, because the region has a hole, it may appear as if we cannot apply Green's theorem to determine the flux. Let's go back and look at the conditions of Green's theorem. C must be a simple closed piecewise smooth curve with a positive, often referred to as counterclockwise orientation that encloses the region R in a plane. This may seem like it's an issue when we have a hole. However, if the region R has a hole, Green's theorem can still be applied if the region R can be enclosed by C with R always on the left, meaning with a positive orientation. So looking at this region R, let's see if we can enclose this with a piecewise smooth curve with a positive orientation. Let's start on the inside circle and then move to the outer circle. We'll call this curve C sub one. Then we'll move along the large circle in a counterclockwise or positive orientation. Notice how if we were walking on this circle, the region R is on the left. We'll go all the way around the large circle. And then from here we'll go back to the small circle. Notice how this would be the opposite of curve C sub one. So we label it the opposite of C sub one. And then from here, to have a positive orientation or to keep the region R on the left, we must move clockwise around the small circle. But again, this is a positive orientation because the region R is on the left. Now we're back here. So the curve is made up of C sub one, union C sub two, union the opposite of C sub one, union C sub three. When we calculate the line integral along curve C sub one, and then the opposite of C sub one, they will undo each other and simplify out, and therefore we can enclose the region R with a simple closed piecewise smooth curve with a positive orientation, and we can apply Green's theorem to determine the flux. Which means the line integral along the curve C of the vector field F dotted with the unit normal vector N differential S, which is flux, is equal to the double integral over the region R of the partial of f with respect to x plus the partial of g with respect to y differential a, where f is the x component and g is the y component of the given vector field. So going back to our problem, f of x comma y is equal to x cubed and g of x comma y is equal to y cubed. And now we'll find the partial of f with respect to x and the partial of g with respect to y. And these are very straightforward. The partial of f with respect to x is three x squared. The partial of g with respect to y is three y squared. So the flux is equal to the double integral over the region R of the partial of f with respect to x plus the partial of g with respect to y which is three x squared plus three y squared differential A. Now here, because the region R is bounded between two circles, we will evaluate this double integral using polar coordinates where differential A is equal to R dr d theta. We also need to write x squared plus y squared using polar coordinates. We factored out the three. We would have three times the quantity x squared plus y squared x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, which gives us a double integral of three r squared, and then we have r dr d theta. And now let's determine the limits of integration for r and theta. The inner circle has a radius of five, the outer circle has a radius of six, and therefore the limits of integration for r are from five to six. We need to integrate all the way around the circle, therefore the limits of integration for theta are from zero to two pi. Let's evaluate this double integral on the next slide. Let's write the integrand function as three r cubed. And now we integrate this back to r. The antiderivative is three times r to the fourth divided by four, or three fourths r to the fourth. And now we find big F of b minus big F of a which is three-fourths times 
6 to the fourth minus 5 to the fourth. 3 fourths times this difference is equal to 2013 fourths. We have the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 2013 fourths d theta. And now we integrate with respect to theta, which gives us 2013 fourths theta. And now we find big F of B minus big F of A one more time, which is 2013 fourths times 2 pi minus 0, or just 2 pi. Simplifying, we have 2 twos and 4, and 1 2 and 2. The exact flux is 2013 halves pi, which is approximately 3162.01. Remember, the flux measures the flow across the curve C. If the flux is positive, the flow is outward away from the region R. If the flux is negative, the overall flow is inward toward the region R. So looking back at our graph, it's pretty easy to see that the overall flow across the curve C is going to be outward, which is the reason why the flux is positive. I hope you found this helpful.